Let's go. What's up? Hope everyone is doing well on this Monday morning, whether you're catching this whole thing live or you're watching it recorded. So I'm going to go over some things today. My name is Christian Perez, 24-year-old uh, Diamond Ambassador in GC. Been proud to have been here for you know just over three years. And what I'm going to do today is actually talk about something that a lot of people struggle with. And so if you're a leader in the organization, one, this is probably a good reality check. And two, it's probably something you should share with your team. And if you're someone who's brand new and you're starting in our business, I feel like this is going to hit you in a way that many people like relate to, right? Because one of the biggest things that people struggle with is the ability to have, you know, to let go of the past. And I noticed that's something that even I struggled with until two and a half years in my business. And the reason why is because it's hard to go against second nature. So today's training is called Bad Habits Are Killing Your Success. And I'm going to go over, um, I'd say about five of these, and then I'm going to go into some general, you know, advice and really tap into some emotion because it's a, it's a conversation that you need to have. You know how when you're growing up, you get the talk from <laughs> your parents? This is like the talk that I need to give you in your network marketing business and just entrepreneurship as a whole, because if you can't figure out network marketing, I promise in general, business is not meant for you. And so this is really important. So number one, and one of the major habits that many people struggle with and it, and kind of it makes it hard for them to let go is their old circle, right? Their old circle is one of the biggest things they cannot let go of. All of you have those friends that you grew up with. All of you have, you know, those people that you used to surround yourself with. It's number one, that old circle that is one of the biggest bad habits that we tend to keep around. And it's one of the hardest to eliminate because we're so used to these people. We're influenced by these people our whole lives, but we can't necessarily cut them out as easily, you know, as we think. That's a huge struggle because many of us have people that have been influencing us a certain way for our whole life. They're the same people that when you start your business, they're not really sure about it and they're not supporting you. And you kind of get to see who the real people are. But even the people that do support you in your friend circle or whatever circle that you have, they don't even have to be friends. It could be family. If they're not serving you, then they're not really meant to be around, at least for now. And I'll explain why. Because a lot of what you sacrifice can be temporary, but some of it has to be permanent. Okay, so the old circle is really important. So maybe we have those friends that whenever we're around, we go back to our old way of acting. We start, you know, joking around a certain way that we never usually do in our business. We, you know, go to clubs or we do this, we go party, we do that. And my old circle when I was in university, actually, that was that was a big thing that we used to do all the time. We used to just screw around, you know, go go to parties and, and do whatever. And it wasn't necessarily anything that like ruined my life, but it was more something that didn't serve what I wanted to become. And with habits, you want to become the next version of yourself. So if that old circle isn't serving you, you got to cut them out. OK, so that's number one. Number two are your old routines. Your old routines are those are things that, by the way, aren't dependent on other people. Those are things that are dependent on you because you are in control of what you do every single day. So are you waking up really late? I know some people, maybe it's 10.05 right now. Some people might not have even made this call because they're so used to sleeping in. And that's maybe a bad habit that's not serving you, right? Another one could be, um, I don't know, I have a tendency to you know, take naps during the day and, and that's wasting a lot of time. Or I have a tendency to never go to the gym and that's not, you know, helping my fitness or I have a tendency to just really go on Netflix. How many of you have those routines where you're on Netflix or you're on Disney Plus or you're on Amazon Prime or, you know, or you're on Apple TV? See why I know all of them? Because I used to do that. <laughs> I know all of these streaming platforms because I used to do that. And that was an old routine that didn't serve me. I was spending too much time behind the screen watching things that were just for my entertainment, but I didn't really have anything that was actually that I was watching that was serving my knowledge and serving the reason, you know, why I wanted to be where I was at and, you know, go forward to become who I wanted to be. Because Christian 2.0, Christian 3.0, Christian 4.0, those are versions of myself that I've either gone to by eliminating a lot of these habits or I still have to go to by eliminating even more. And for some of you, that might be going to a part-time income. That might be going to a full-time income. That might be going to a six-figure income. You've got to let go of certain things. And I'll explain why at the end more so after I go into the five into the five habits. But number two is your old routine. Okay. Number three is your self-image. 
And this one is really important because our self-image is how we believe in ourselves. Brian Tracy in his book, uh, The Psychology of Selling, says that the key difference, that whole book is a lot of value, but the main point is that the key difference between a great salesperson and a poor salesperson is their self-image. And if you don't know what that means, that is how you perceive yourself, how you look at yourself, how good do you think you are? Now, we grow up in a society where so many things are said to us that kind of bring us down. And for those of you that are live here, you can probably agree with that. We are grown up in an environment, in an ecosystem that is bringing us down and lowering our level of thinking. We are not allowed to think big. We are not allowed to dream. We are not allowed to, to take risks because they're too risky and it's not what people do. And because of that, our self-image tends to be one that we just, you know, we, we're just kind of like, yeah, you know, that, that's like a that's like a far-fetched idea. That's just a dream. That's something that I could never accomplish. You know, I'm, I'm good where I'm at. I'm an average person. I'm never going to, wow, if I see like a celebrity like Drake, uh, which is funny because it's a funny story. I was actually with a couple members on my team. We drove by his house because he lives close to me in Toronto. And we drove by his house and we're like, like, you know, it's, it's funny because before, back in the day, I, I would have looked at that as completely unrealistic, but now today I look at it as attainable and that's like a target. Um, but many of us are not allowed to think that big and because of that, we're not, we're not allowing our brains to grow. So your self-image is very important. If you believe you are a good network marketer, you are a good entrepreneur, you are a good person in general, then every action that you do will line up with your self-belief and your self-image. If you don't believe in yourself, then everything that you do is not gonna line up with that and you're gonna stay the person that you were before. You are gonna stay that person that you were before. Do you understand? So a lot of us have a habit of not thinking too highly of ourselves because of the ecosystem and, and environment we're brought up in, right? But if we change that, and now we think, I'm gonna shout out some people in the chat. We got Carlos, he wants to be the 2.0 version of himself. He's gonna to have to eliminate bad habits to get there. We have, uh, I think it's Emila. Same thing. She's going to want to become that 2.0, 3.0 version of, of herself. She's going to have to sacrifice who she thought she was before because now she's becoming someone else. So that's really important. Now we're going to get into number four, which is the most common one, which is your comfort zone. Let me say that again, your comfort zone. This is the most obvious one and the one that we think of all the time. We think of the comfort zone as, I mean, that relates to everything I just said, but the comfort zone is one of those things where you know, we, we look at it and it's it, it dictates everything that we do. And if you don't think it does, you're really mistaken because today, I don't care how much money you make. Even myself, even myself at the current rank that I am today, I still have to make sure I'm battling and not just battling, but winning that battle against my comfort zone because your comfort zone manifests itself in many different ways. It is not just one. It is not just two. It is like thousands. So even let's say, Let's say I was nervous to get on this call, which which I'm not because I've been presenting so much in my life. But at a point, there was a point where I would be scared to go on a Zoom call. And the reason why was because my comfort zone was telling me, you know, it'd be a lot nicer to watch this behind the screen than actually have to go in and, and, and talk in front of people or do whatever. Maybe I'm not going to go up to that person at the boba place. You know what I mean? I'm not going to interact with them because... You know, I'm just I'm just not someone who likes to talk to people or maybe I'm not going to make that post on social media because I'm so used. I'm so used to just sticking to myself and consuming content instead of creating content. You understand what I'm saying? Or here's a really good one that I dealt with in leadership for my leaders that are watching this and my upcoming leaders that are watching this. One of the things that I really struggled with because of my comfort zone was people pleasing. I loved to make everyone happy and I love to be the nice guy. And that is how I lived my life for a long time. And it's the reason why I saw a certain level of success in my previous, you know, ventures in, in university and all that stuff. Because over there, it's just like a popularity contest where whoever pleases the most people <laughs> is the most popular. But in business and leadership, you cannot coach someone by being the nice guy. You should be the nice guy or girl. You should be, but... The key difference is to be a coach, you have to be willing to tell people the truth, whether they like it or not. And my comfort zone would have said, Christian, you can't do that because if you do that, they're not going to like you because you're so used to everyone. Like I stopped caring about what people thought about me a long time ago. And the reason why is because I knew those opinions weren't going to pay me. And as soon as I realized that, 
that was a shift out of my comfort zone that I needed to make. So for many of you, it might not be exactly that, or it could be that, but there are many different things dictated in your life by your comfort zone and your inability to let go of that. Okay. So that's number four. Now, number five is, oh, guys, are you ready for this? Number five is your why. Number five is your why. Wait, hold on. What does he mean, our why? So we're supposed to let go of our why? We're supposed to sacrifice our why? But isn't that the reason why we're doing the business? Number five is your why. Because you have to be willing to sacrifice your why now to serve your why later. Let that sink in for a second. You have to be willing to sacrifice your why now to serve your why later. If your why right now is your parents, if your why right now are your kids, if your why right now is you, you have to be willing to sacrifice time with those people sometimes, or all the time, to give more time later on. I don't know if Rakan's on this feed or not, but if he is, one thing that I saw him do from the beginning, and the reason why I strongly believe he's successful is because he detached himself from his why, yet making that his motivation all the time. So I've seen Rakan. He loves his parents. I know that. I've seen him sacrifice time with his family for the first few years of his business to now where he's able to spend as much time with them as he wants. But many people aren't willing to do that. They're not like, I can't sacrifice time with my family. My family's everything. I can't sacrifice time with my kids. My kids are everything. Well, here's the reality. Either you sacrifice time with them now to give them the future that you want, or you stay in the same position that you are right now. It's a decision that you have to make. And it's the hardest decision and the hardest habit to get rid of because we are so used to serving everyone and serving the people that we love that we're not willing to sacrifice them. And that is the truth. And this, in my opinion, in a position of leadership, seeing teams go in and out, seeing top leaders go in and out, being at a mastermind with people that make 500 grand a month, 600 grand a month, 700 grand a month to a million a month, or even more than that. The one thing I understood is that they were able to make the hard decisions. They were able to make the decision of sacrificing their why to serve their why later. So I'm going to give you an example of mine. And I'm going to get personal here. My, my dad is one of my biggest, why. my parents are. But my dad, my dad is not young. He's not, he's not a young chap anymore. <laughs> I think he's approaching 70. And so I tell myself, do I have, like, I want to spend all my time with him and my mom. But I sacrificed them when I first started this business. And a lot of people are like, how did you do that? Um, what I did was I would stay at school. I would go to university just so there's no, there's no excuses here. I was a full-time university student a year ago, okay? What I would do for the first two years of my business, I would go to my classroom, go to my classes, study, and when classes were done at like 3 p.m., 4 p.m. or whatever time it was, I would stay there until midnight at my university because I knew I had to leave my, I had to leave my environment that I was in because it didn't serve me. The support wasn't there. The elevation of my mindset wasn't there. It was a distraction. Everything that distracted me was in my place. So I had to be willing to sacrifice that and even sacrifice and say no to family functions or this. I, I can't go out for breakfast today, mom and dad. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm just, I'm doing a call. I'm working on the business. And because I did that then, now I have more time with them today and I'm able to support them financially. But if I didn't make those hard decisions, I probably wouldn't be able to do that today because I'd still be stuck doing the same thing over and over again. Now that's gonna either hurt you or it's gonna hit you. You choose which one it is. It's gonna to apply to you in different ways. But these things, and that's, that's the last point by the way, those five things and those five habits are probably the reason why you feel stuck right now. Or if you're just starting, these are gonna be the hardest, you know, <laughs> what is it called? What are they called again? Um, like final bosses in each like video game. These are like, these are like the final bosses that you have to battle in each level. And until you can beat all these bosses, you're not going to be able to create the life that you want because to become the person that you envision in your head and the person that you want to be, you have to sacrifice the person you were before you got started. Does that make sense? If people tell me, Christian, you seem so different from when I met you. Good. 
Because if I wasn't different, then I didn't do a good job at getting to the next level of myself, the next version of myself. And that would actually be a failure. So I'm glad that I changed. Don't change your morals, by the way. Don't change who you are. I'm still the same person at my heart, but I have a different mindset about life and I have a different work ethic. It's different. I'm able to make the hard decisions now. I'm able to prioritize people over myself. I'm able to do the things and sacrifice you know, time with certain people or cut off certain people that didn't serve me because at the end of the day, you're doing this for you. And if you're doing it for someone else, they got to understand that sometimes, you know, you got to set time aside so you can focus on you and your business to succeed, to serve them after. All of these habits are like ropes around your waist. I need you to, so there's five of them. And by the way, there's so many more, but these are the five that stood out to me. And these five can be ropes around your waist. Imagine you have like a harness and there's five ropes attached to you. Every time you let go of one of these habits, one of the ropes break. And now you can finally walk a little bit. There's a little bit less tension. But you can't ever go forward to the next version of yourself if you can't cut off all these ropes. So I'm going to ask you and leave you off with this. Can you cut off all those ropes? Because if you can, you'll get to that 2.0, 3.0 version of yourself. If you can't, you'll be stuck in the same position that you were when you started. Okay? That's, that's all I have to say. GC or whoever's watching this, I hope you gained some value. This is going to be one of the realest conversations that you've probably ever had. So share this with your teams. I promise you this will create a lot of success stories. Anyways, guys, take care. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.